guys, so this is going to be a haul video, and I know these aren't people's favorite videos on my channel, but I really enjoy filming them, and that has to count for something, right? Like 95% of what I'm going to show you is from New York City, from the Garment District, but I did pick up one thing at Joann's, and it relates to my Halloween project, so I will stick that in at the end since people have been asking me about it. But everything else is from the Garment District, and I was mostly shopping for three projects and I got pretty much everything I need for those three projects so I'm really really excited. I haven't felt this motivated and enthusiastic about projects in quite a while so let's get into it because I have a lot to share. The first thing I got is a fabric you will have seen before and it's a kind of mixture between chiffon and organza and it's in this taupey color with silver stripes through it. I bought two yards of this when I went to New York City for my birthday. At least I think that's when I got it. And I knew at that point that I wanted to use it to make a chemise or a smock to go underneath something. But two yards of fabric really isn't enough to do that. So I'm not sure why I didn't get three yards or four yards at that time. But I only bought two. So I went in hoping I could find more of the same material. And I did, so I bought two yards of it. This fabric is also similar to something I've had before, but I don't think I ever showed it in a haul. And it's called Cotton Folly. At least I believe that's what the guy said. And I bought this to make another chemise or smock to go underneath the project. I just really liked the colors in it, how it had this sort of bluish grayish tone to it and then a gold shift. It feels like a very soft satin and then it has this beautiful iridescence to it. And I just, I think this fabric's wonderful. And it was really nice to work with too, so I think it will be a good undershirt type of material even though it isn't very accurate either. So this is the next fabric I bought. Isn't it pretty? <laughs> I have five yards of it and it's 120 inches wide so it's being stored on this roll instead of an actual bolt. So that's why it looks like this. I bought this for a burgundian dress and I bought the trim for that dress before I bought the fabric. So I had a silvery grayish brown colored fur which I knew I wanted to put on the hem and the sleeves of the dress. And I had a gold trim which I knew I wanted to use on the headpiece and the kirtle that goes underneath the dress. So once I was looking at those two materials together, I got really worried because trying to match a cool toned and a warm toned trim to the same material and have it look beautiful is really difficult. But I got very lucky um, when I found this. And it's a cool toned sort of grayish blue fabric, but then it has this gorgeous gold scroll print on it. So it matches the cool toned fur really nicely, but it also really incorporates that gold, which I wanted to use on the kirtle. So I'm very happy with this find, and since it's 120 inches wide, I only had to buy 5 yards of it, which is a lot better than buying 8 yards of a 60 inch wide fabric. To go along with that, I picked up a half yard of the matching blue fabric. This is a home decor collection, so they have the fabric in various different colors and matching prints, and this is the matching solid which goes with this print. So I picked up a half yard of that for the headpiece. And this is the fabric for the kirtle, and I love it so much, and I'm so excited to work with it because it's been a while since I've worked with a really pretty brocade. So I'm just super excited, and look at this! I think this fabric is just gorgeous. I really love brocades. I love the sheen they have, and they just look so luxurious. And I haven't worked with one in a really long time, so I'm excited to be making a dress out of one, finally, because it's been over a year, which is kind of ridiculous considering how much I love them. So this is double-sided. One side is sparkly and then the other side is more sparkly. And this is the side that's more sparkly. The metallic threads are more prominent. I believe I got five yards of this and I'm going to be making a medieval kirtle out of it to wear underneath my Burgundian gown, which is what this fabric will be used for. And I think these look absolutely lovely together. So I'm excited to make that dress. The next costume I want to get fabric for is a medieval coat hardy. And I want to make a woman's version and a men's version. And I'll end up wearing both of them, but they'll be inspired by their respective genders. And the fabrics I found that I really liked for this project are actually quite similar to the colors I'm going to use in the Burgundian dress. I started off by finding this brocade. And this is more subtle brocade than the last one I showed you. But it still has a really nice sheen to it. It's sort of that grayish blue color but with gold threads woven into it. And it has a very prominent texture to it, which I really like because that tends to show in photography and add a lot of depth to the costume. I ended up getting three yards of it and it will be the contrasting fabric to go with a velvet that I found. 
this is the velvet I bought and I feel a little bit silly buying velvet for this project because I'm making this so I can make a hoopland-y. Hoopland? I don't know how it's pronounced but it's a very large fur trimmed overcoat um, sort of like a cloak which is worn over top of coat hardies. So I really want to make one of those and I was planning on using velvet for that. So I'm not sure why I bought velvet for the dress to go underneath it. I just wasn't really thinking um, at the time, but I do really like this fabric, so I'm still going to use it, and I think it looks beautiful with the brocade. I really love the dark navy with the light blue. So I'm happy with this purchase, even though it was sort of a silly decision to make. Um, as I said, I have three yards of this one, and then I think I got five or six yards of velvet, and they were both seven or eight dollars a yard. I can't remember. And since I'm making the men's version of the same type of costume, I wanted to get fabrics that coordinated for that. And that ended up working out really nicely because I found this beautiful wool. Men's coat hardies have a few different pieces to them. There are tights or pants that are worn with them, and then there's the slim fitting jacket, and then over top of that there's often a cape worn. So this is what I bought for the cape, and I really like how this matches the brocade I got. I think it's really just such an awesome color and to be able to find it in the type of wool I needed was just a very very happy coincidence. So I picked up a yard and a half of this. Then for the jacket, since I didn't want to use velvet for it, I bought three yards of this textured wool suiting. And three yards is probably a lot more than I'll end up needing, but it's been a while since I've made a jacket inspired by men's historical costumes. so. It probably isn't too bad of an idea to have some extra in case I mess up. Now this fabric I didn't buy on this trip, but it is from New York City and I wanted to mention it and it's for the bottom half of the men's coat hardy costume. And I'm going to use it for the slim fit pants and it's a four way stretch jersey with gold threads running through it. But the gold shade of this matches the brocade I bought for the woman's costume perfectly. So I think the men's and women's costume are going to have really similar color schemes that pair beautifully together. And I'm very happy about that because finding wools that match velvet and brocade is not an easy task and I was prepared for that to be more of a challenge than it actually was. That's it for the fabric, so I'm going to clean up a little bit and then I will show you all the pretty trims that I bought because I bought quite a lot of them. In the first trim store I went into, I bought six feathers. I got two of these brown peacock feathers and four of the bleached ones. And these are just a little bit different than anything you can get around here and they were really cheap too. They were 50 cents a feather. Next up, I went to Beach World, which is always a good time, but I didn't actually get that much there. The only thing I went in to get are these Little Monty's, and these are for my 1630s taffeta blue dress, which I will be starting on soon. And I got 36 of these, and I think it was $4 for 12 or $5 for 12 or something like that. And these are oval in shape, and they're a really interesting kind of taupey gold color. I wasn't planning on getting these, I was planning on getting the clear ones, but these just really struck my fancy, and I liked the shape of them too. So I paid for those, and then I was walking out of the store, and I saw these, and I thought they were really cool. And they are these metal beads, but they look almost like buttons, and they have a very intricate, interesting pattern on them, so I liked them enough to get three packs, and I do think these are something I could incorporate into a costume, even though I'm not sure how to do that just yet. This isn't from Beads World, but it was in the same bag. This is a metal clasp I bought for the menswear inspired capelet and I don't know if I'll actually end up using it on that costume because it isn't historically accurate at all but I thought it was really cool looking and I just I wanted it. Now let's talk about some trims. I got four yards of this gorgeous lace. It was underneath the counter and it just caught my eye and I really loved it. I believe it was eight dollars a yard or maybe it was like $35 for the four yards that I bought. It was something like that. And this lace is made in such a way that you can fussy cut it out and have two separate borders. So even though I bought four yards, I can cut it out and have eight yards of trim. I think I'm gonna use this to trim the hem and hood of a cape that I really want to make. And I think I'm gonna be making that closer to winter when it's cooler out and we're getting snow. And I don't think I mentioned it, but this has sequins sewn on throughout the lace pattern as well as pearls. And when the light hits it, it just, it looks like snow the way it twinkles. It's really, really pretty. I saw these at the front of the store and I just had to get them. And they're these feather shaped gold sequins. 
And I'm not sure how I'm going to incorporate these into a costume, but gold is a color I use a lot, and I've used up quite a few of the gold sequins I bought last time I was in, so I figured gold feather shaped sequins actually have a fair chance of being used in one of my projects, even though I'm not sure how they're going to work just yet. I think they're really cool, and I really want to use them. And this is so pretty! Again, it's in that weird silvery bluish gray color, but it's beautiful. The petals are filled with sequins and they're outlined with seed beads and then there's a pearl in the center. And I just thought this was so pretty. It was $13 a yard, which is quite painful to pay for a trim, but I think at the neckline or waistline of a dress, this would just be stunning. So I decided to get a yard of it and I'm happy that I did because I'm still just like in complete awe of how pretty it is. So I think that's a good reason to buy something and to have it in your collection. From the same store I got a yard and a half of this gold trim and this is the trim I'm going to use on the kirtle that goes underneath my burgundian dress. So this was what I was trying to match the scroll print fabric to. The entire design is done and embellished with seed beads and seed beads are glass so they're a little bit more expensive and not usually used on trims that are in my price range. But this was in my price range and it's made entirely out of seed beads and I think it's beautiful. It's sort of a floral vine type of pattern and I just thought it would look gorgeous around the neckline of the kirtle and around the base of the headpiece that goes with it. Unfortunately, I didn't read my list when I was in the store and I ended up getting a yard and a half instead of two and a half yards. So I'm not really sure if I will have enough um, to use it the way that I really want to use it, but I think I can still incorporate it into that costume in a really beautiful way. Then I bought these two trims for the woman's coat hardy, and there tends to be trim around the cuffs of the sleeves and on the sash that goes around the waist. So this is for the sleeves and this is for the sash. I got three yards of this and a yard of this. And this one is wider than I'd really wanted it to be, but I just fell in love with the design and I thought it would look really striking over a darker material. And I'm not really going to try and explain the pattern because you can pretty much see it. These trims are made with a embroidery machine that stitches over top of the heavyweight interfacing and then there's fusible web added to the back, so you can not actually iron these trims on. But what I like about them is since they are embroidered, they look like the embroidered trims you'd see on dresses a couple hundred years ago, even though they're made by machine, not people slaving away. So I really like this, and I like it for medieval costume. And I like this one better, I just think the print is more interesting and delicate, but I don't think they had enough of this for me to make the sash out of it, and it was also a little bit more expensive, so I didn't want to buy four yards of it. This is another Beads World bag, but everything in here is from the store High Trimming. I bought some stuff from the store last time and I couldn't figure out what the store was called, so I'm happy to finally know the name and have the business card of it. These are really cool. I got 12 of these, and they're these teardrop shaped, incredibly elaborate metal stampings. And I picture these being made into a crown. I can just see them all soldered together with little gems glued in. I've seen this on Etsy. I've wanted to try that for a long time, but I haven't wanted to pay for the shipping costs when I can't see them in person, really visualize the size of them and how they would go together. So when I saw them in the store, I was like, yes, I want 12 of them. I'm going to make myself a crown. I posted a photo of these on Instagram saying that I thought they looked like dragon's eyes. So I bought six of them. And that's pretty much what happened. I just saw them and thought that they were really, really cool and that the design of them was just unlike anything I'd ever seen before. They're a resin stone with a busted top, and then it's sort of like a gradient from cream to orange to brown with red veining going through them. So they just have a really, really cool texture. I got two packs of five of these little teardropped ones. And then I got a pack of three larger ones. And I figured these could trim the edge of a collar or potentially go on a headpiece or something like that. I wasn't planning on getting these ones even though I really like them too. They're just the same thing but in a purple tone and they actually had these in more shapes. So I got them in this sort of hexagon type shape and they also have a busted top except the gradient's purple and the veining's purple. And the reason I bought these is because I have a ton of purple velvet that I've just had around for ages. I don't know what I originally bought it for. I think it might have been like 90 or 80 percent off in Joanne, so I decided to get five yards of it. But I've had it forever, and this is the first time I've seen something that I could potentially use with it that actually inspires me and makes me want to use it. 
they were bought with good intentions and with a project in mind. So that's more than I can say for the orange ones. The orange ones I bought just because they were really cool. I was going to say that's the end of the video, but that would be a lie because I haven't told you about what I bought at Joann's yet. And I don't really celebrate Halloween, but I know a lot of people do. So I thought it would be a fun time of the year to make a pajama set inspired by one of my favorite characters. I don't know why I said one of. This is my favorite character from my favorite movie, and it's Toothless from How to Train Your Dragon. And I absolutely love that movie, and I love Toothless because he reminds me of my dog, who I love very much. And I've wanted to make a sort of hoodie slash pajama set inspired by his character and based off of the Night Fury character design for more than a year. A couple of years ago, I made an Appa hoodie inspired by the Sky Bisons from Avatar The Last Airbender. And then I made my dog a little Momo hoodie. And I had so much fun making that that I like instantly knew I wanted to make another one in the future. And I decided almost right away that that next one that I made was going to be toothless. And I bought the fabrics shortly after deciding that, and now it's been more than a year, and I haven't done anything towards making that costume. So I'm going to do it at the end of October, and I'm going to vlog the process, because I don't know enough about what I'm doing to make a tutorial on it, or the making of video, or anything like that. But I will do vlogs, and talk about the process as I'm going through it, and figuring stuff out. So the two fabrics I got, I didn't need a lot of materials since I already have heaps of fuzzy minky fabrics that I bought for this ages ago, but I did want to get some red because Toothless has the red flag that's part of his tail that Hiccup made him. So I got 1.3 yards of this fuzzy double-sided fabric. This was a remnant, and the remnant was mislabeled as being 0.13 yards, so I got this fuzzy fabric for a dollar or something ridiculous like that. And I didn't really realize it until I got home and looked at my receipt. Then I got two yards of black flannel, which will be used backing the Miki to give it a little more structure. And that's it! I'm ready to get to work on it whenever I feel like it. I've been sort of like in a costume rut recently, but I've got my next five projects planned out, and I'm just so excited to work on them, and so excited by the materials I have for them, and I'm just like feeling so creative and inspired, and I'm really happy to be back to feeling that way, because it's been a while. It's been way too long. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope you'll stick around. I think my next video is going to be another tutorial. And then we'll be back to the making of videos and vlogs and all that good stuff. Hopefully I will see you then and I hope you have a fantastic day.